Hey and welcome back. A project that's been on my list to do for a long time is one of those vintage style ratcheting screwdrivers. There's something about that style of tool that I really like and I think it looks a lot nicer than what's sold today. I think it's something to do with that exposed mechanism that looks really nice. I'll start off by making the main shaft and then I think I'll build all of the other parts around it. What I'm going to use is a piece of silver steel. It should be good enough for what I need since I need to heat treat it. The first thing I'll do is turn down the taper for the blade. I'll set the taper on the compound to cut roughly 4 degrees. I can now start to machine the main body of the screwdriver. The front part has a 2 to 1 taper, so I'll set the compound to cut that. I've set the part up in the mill to cut the hole, which probably sounds a bit counterintuitive since it already was set up in the lathe. But I'm going to be reaming the hole, and the lathe runs a little bit too fast to run these cutters. Reaming is done at half the speed, but double the feed of drilling, and if I was to use my lathe, which is a fixed speed lathe, I'd probably burn up the cutter. And given that this reamer costs somewhere in the midst of 40 bucks, I'm not looking to replace it anytime soon. And that is a much better and more accurate hole than we would have gotten from a drill. Now as you can probably see from here, there is a little bit of eccentricity in the hole. The hole isn't on centre. Now that's probably a combination of my chuck running out a bit, and the drill wandering off centre, which isn't uncommon in deep holes. To get the parts running concentrically, I'll superglue them to the shaft. And that turned out really nicely. Now to break the superglue bond, I'm simply going to soak it in a pot of acetone overnight. 
Acetone does a pretty good job at breaking up super glue. Now I could have used heat to break the bond, but I'd rather not put the silver steel through a heat cycle, especially on that ground end, which I'm not going to use for this project. And after a night of soaking, the glue has let go. The next thing I need to do is make the cuts for the pin, and this will form the ratcheting part of the ratcheting mechanism. I'll use the dividing head facing upwards to hold and index the part. Now I don't know what I was expecting, but I certainly wasn't expecting that. It probably didn't help that I forgot to lock the chuck, so that probably explained why the whole workpiece felt a bit loose. I might need to redo this part. And that is one redone part. I only machined in a part of the way this time, and I think it gives it a more of a revolver look, and I really like it. With the front half done, I can now machine the back, starting with the hole for the pin. I'll then machine a slot in the side, and this will allow me to select which way the screwdriver ratchets. Next, I'll make the ratchet pin. I can now start to shape the pin with the file until the ratchet mechanism starts to work. And it took a fair amount of filing and refining until I got it to a point where I was happy with it. And this probably involved remaking the part three or four times. And after that, I'll drill through and tap an M4 thread through the pin, and then I'll machine up a little lever which will allow me to select which way to ratchet. Next, I need a way of connecting a wooden handle to the screwdriver. What I decided on doing was making a shaft that I could weld to the back of the part. I can then clean up the weld and then turn the shaft down to a diameter that I have a drill for, so I can actually drill a hole for the handle. And speaking of handles, I'll be using a piece of pine for the handle. 
I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be used as a furniture leg, but it was the right size, length and price for a handle, or at least it eventually will be once I shape it. With the handle now done, I can now cut the main shaft to length. I can then drill and tap a hole for a grub screw. The grub screw will be used to keep the shaft held in place, but it will also allow it to freely spin. I'll then mark out the position of the grub screw and then I can machine out a small groove on the main shaft. And with that done, I can now start to machine the flat blade. I'm going with the flat blade simply because it's the easiest type of screw that I can easily make in the workshop with the lathe, the milling machine and a slitting saw. With the tip machined, I can now harden it and it's the only part that's going to need heat treatment. A bit of flux will help prevent oxidation at high temperatures and then I'll heat the part until it becomes non-magnetic. I'll then temper it back until I get a dark straw colour, and for a part like this, I think butane does a much better job than propane, since it puts out less heat and there's less chance that you'll overshoot the desired temper. And the final thing that I'll do is drill a hole through the front and the shaft, and then I'll ream it to size. The hole is for a pin which will fix the shaft to the ratchet mechanism. And that is the assembled ratchet. It's surprisingly simple and I really like how it feels to use. A quick coat of mineral oil will also make the handle really pop out. And that is the project done. Overall, I am really happy with how it turned out. It's a bit more simplified than some of the other designs out there, but I am really happy with how it turned out. Some of the other designs have a side handle to give you a bit more leverage, but I didn't think it was necessary for what I need from it. And that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. See you next week.